Welcome to this Flexbox crash course. In this video, you will learn how Flexbox works, but also you will see practical examples of how to use Flexbox and like what are typical common layouts in the real world where people use Flexbox. So Flexbox is critical to learn because in most modern, what I call layout situations, you should be, you should be using Flexbox as the solution, right? So whenever you run into some kind of layout problem, for example, uh, you wanna have one element on one side and the other element on the other side, you basically have two options in, in CSS. The first one is Flexbox, the other one is CSS Grid. Now in my experience, you actually wanna be using Flexbox in like 95% of the, of the times. This is why I say here, in most modern layout situations, you should use Flexbox as the solution because it's easier to use than CSS Grid. And it's also like most components are simply more suitable to how Flexbox works. You're simply not gonna be able to build modern websites and web apps without Flexbox. And therefore every front end and full stack developer needs to set aside some time to learn Flexbox. Okay, so how is this video structured? So in section one, we're simply gonna look at how Flexbox works but make sure you stick around for section two because in there I have collected like very typical common real world layouts in which you should be using Flexbox. So that's what we're gonna do. Try to make it all the way to the end. You walk away with much more clarity. So let's get into it. Okay, so we have an HTML file and it's linking to this CSS file. It's currently empty. So Flexbox is always about a parent element and its child elements. So for example, let's say we have a div I'm gonna call it boxes. And in the div, we have three boxes, let's say. So we have box one and two more. So I'll make this two and three, All right? So we have a parent element here and these are the child elements. So in Flexbox terms, this is what we would call the flex container and these are the flex items. So I will quickly style these boxes. So this parent element now is 400 pixels tall, 400 pixels wide, and it has a black background. Okay, so now the boxes. Okay, so the boxes are each 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall, and they are purple. And now this is actually the default layout that we get um, without using Flexbox. You know, these are so-called block level elements, so they sit on their, they sit on their own line. Right, so what you end up with is actually a vertical flow, right? Because nothing else, there cannot be a horizontal flow because it's a block level element. They kick off anything else that sits on their line. So this is actually the default layout that you get. And let's actually add a border around them so we can easily distinguish them because now they're sitting right against each other. All right, so to unlock the Flexbox functionalities, we have to go to the parent element, which is this div. We selected that here and I will add some space here. We can say display flex, right? So this is really the starting point and let's actually see what we get if we save here and refresh. All right, so now we get the default layout in Flexbox. The default layout is that the child elements, right? If we look in the HTML, these three divs, they sit on the same row, right? So they sit horizontally. Right, so sometimes you want to make elements sit on the same row and all you need to do is simply say display flex. Right, so with display flex, we, we sort of unlock the Flexbox features and this becomes the so-called flex container and these become the flex items, right? And the flex container has certain properties and the flex items, they can also have certain properties. Okay, so what else can we do? Right, because sometimes this is not enough. Well, actually most of the time, you know, this is not enough. Let's say we actually want these elements to sit in the center horizontally. So uh, Flexbox really works in two, in two directions, you can say. So we can regulate how they should be positioned horizontally and vertically. So horizontally, here we can use justify content. Right, and with this property, we can determine where the flex items should be positioned along the horizontal axis. Right, so here we can say center, for example. We want the flex items to be in the center, right? Or maybe all the way at the end. So we can say end, right? Um, or maybe there should be space between them. So we can also say space between. Right, so now there's space between them. 
but maybe we don't want them, you know, the, the first one and the third one to sit right against the edge. So we also have other ones, for example, um, space around. Right now, now there's a little bit of space here. We even have space evenly. So now there is a, as much space on this side as here. Right, so justify content is what we can use in this case for the, you know, for positioning along the horizontal axis. So we also have um, a property to regulate how they how they should be positioned vertically, and this is called align items. Right, so now they're sitting here at the top. Maybe we want them to sit here in the center vertically. So we can say center, and now they sit at the center, right? Or maybe all the way here at the bottom or the end. Right now they sit here at the end, right? So the most commonly though, you want them to be, you know, usually you want to center things. This is very common, right? We want to center them uh, vertically and also horizontally, right? So we can also say horizontally they should be centered, right? So in case you were wondering how can you center something in CSS, that seems to be a question that, you know, comes up quite often. Well, a very good candidate is using Flexbox and you use justify content horizontally and then vertically you can use align items and set it to center uh, for both of them right so with justify content and align items here in the in the flex container we set the position for all of them but maybe we want you know the box one or box two or box three individually to be a little bit different so maybe we want the third box here so box three maybe we want this one vertically not to sit in the center but at the at the bottom or at the end so we also have properties for these flex items individually for example align self right so align items for all of them right and then you can also have align self for the for the uh, flex item individually so we can say align self at the end right so now this one is sitting at the end or maybe it should sit at the start so we also have start Right, and now only this one is sitting at the start, right? So align self is for the individual flex item and align items is for all of them. So that's vertical. Do we also have, you know, an individual version for justify content? And yes, we also have that. So let's say horizontally, we, we don't want this one to sit in the center, but all the way at the end. So this property is actually not something that looks like justify content. It's actually margin auto. Margin auto has some special behavior in Flexbox. So for example, we can say margin left auto. And this looks a little bit strange, but basically what we're saying is for box three, we're gonna say margin to the left auto. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna push as, it's gonna create as much margin between itself and the next flex item as possible. Which will, which will push itself all the way to the end. And actually it will push the other ones all the way to the other side, right? So this is how you can regulate that horizontal positioning on an individual uh, basis, right? So let me remove these individual properties for now. And let me also remove these, uh, the centering here. So we start from a clean slate, right? So this is the default layout. They're gonna sit in the top left corner like this on the same row. Now let's say we don't want them to be flowing horizontally like this. Maybe we actually do want that vertical flow. So we can simply set the flex direction to column. The default is row, by the way. So we don't have to specify that that's the default. The other option you have here is column. And then you get that uh, vertical flow. And now let's say we want to center it both horizontally and vertically again. So previously, let's start horizontally. Previously, we used justify content to regulate the position horizontally, right? The thing is, the tricky thing in Flexbox is that once you use flex direction column, they actually switch. So justify content now is for the vertical axis and align items is for the horizontal axis. That's very tricky. But you'll see that as we, as we now set center here, for example, right, justify content, we would expect that justify content works horizontally, right? So we would expect them to sit like here However, what you will see is now justify content works vertically. So they will sit, they will be sitting here, right? And now align items, previously it was for the vertical axis, but now because of flex direction column, it's actually for the horizontal axis. 
right? So now when we set this to center, it's actually centered horizontally, right? So that's really the trickiest part, but we'll see some examples of them in the next uh, section. All right, so almost finished here, bear with, bear with me. I also want to talk about if you have more than three, what happens actually? Do they wrap onto a new line or do they go outside the, the parent element here? Let's say we have uh, two more boxes here, four and five. And I'm just quickly going to style them. Okay, so now we have five. And you can see the default behavior is actually that it tries to, well, cram itself on the same row, right? So even though we set a width of 100 pixels for each of them, that width will actually become smaller as you try as you add more flex items and they cram into each other to make it, to make each other smaller, right? So if you want them, if you want them to, you know, keep that 100 pi pixels of width and you want them to simply wrap onto a new line if they don't fit anymore, you have to make that explicit in Flexbox. So here on the on the flex container, the parent element, we actually have to explicitly state here flex wrap wrap. When you do that, they will actually wrap onto a new line. Okay, and when you have multiple lines, uh, there's one thing that changes actually. So you can see the the second line does not sit right against the first line, right? So there is some space here. However, horizontally, it still works the same here, right? So we can still say justify content center, for example. When we do that, everything is centered. But how do we actually get this line to sit close to the other line? Well, now, if we try to use align items, right, let's actually st set it to center as well, see what happens. Well, now it's centered, right? But it still has that space between the lines. Right, so here we have another property and honestly this is pretty advanced and I rarely use it in practice but I still want to show you this for completion uh, sake. So there is also align content right? and I'm actually already doubting whether I should show you this because I'm afraid that you're going to confuse it with align items. Align items is what you want to use 99% of the time. Align content is what you want to use if you're creating a tutorial about Flexbox. Right, or you know, in very rare situations. So align content is what you can use if you have multiple rows. Like let's say we, we use start here. And now both lines, they try to sit at the start, meaning they will sit right against each other, right? We can also center them so that, so that they're actually centered, right? The way that we probably intend them to be centered. And if we remove the align items here, you'll see that it, they are still centered, right? So just keep in mind when you have multiple rows, um, which actually doesn't happen that often, it happens sometimes, but usually it doesn't happen. Usually you can simply use align items. However, when you have multiple rows, you may want to use align content instead of align items. Now let's say um, we keep it like this. I removed align items. Now they're sitting all right against each other, right? Maybe we want some space between the flex items. So we have column gap. Let's make it uh, 30 pixels. Now you can see it adds 30 pixels of space uh, vertically actually, right? A column, vertical, right? And maybe we also want some space between these two rows, right? So we also have a row gap. We can make that 30 pixels as well, right? Gap between the rows, right? Now, since we have the same for both, we can actually also just use gap, right? So this will work for both uh, hor uh, horizontal and uh, vertical gaps. Okay, let me remove all of this again. And I'm gonna remove the other two that we just added. Okay, so this is the default layout. Now, sometimes we actually wanna change the order of the flex items. This is actually very handy when you make your project responsive and we'll see an actual practical example of this. But let's say just to distinguish, just to distinguish them a little bit better, I'm gonna make this a different color, the third box. And let me actually remove the four and five boxes. So the third box now has a slightly different color. Right, now uh, with Flexbox, Right, we still have display flex, so the flex features are still available to us. Let's say for some reason 
and um, this usually comes up with responsiveness so you want to change the layout as you make it responsive for let's say mobile or tablets and sometimes you need to switch the order of flex items let's say that we want this one to sit at the front right so this one should come first so what we can do is we can go to box three we can say order and we can give this an order number it doesn't really matter what number let's say five right and then the other two if they have a higher number let's say eight and this one has ten right so this one has five this one has eight this one has ten now this one comes first because it has the lowest number here right so we have the order property if you want to change the order lowest number comes first right and highest numbers highest number comes last so now the first one is actually sitting here right okay so last thing i want to show you so this was all for the positioning of flex items right positioning that's a part of layout right let's go back to the default layout let me change back this color Right, so layouts are really two things. The first one is positioning, and the second one is uh, their size. Right, so sizing elements, that's also part of the layouts. And right now, they all have a width of 100 pixels. Right? We set it as, you know, we hard coded this 100 pixels. But let's say we want to do it in a different way. So I'm going to remove their width property, and instead, we're going to use the flex property. So with flex, we can determine what proportion of the available space they should take up, right? So the entire width here of this uh, flex container is the available space. And we can say, well, we want the first one to take up um, two proportions of that. And the second box should get two proportions as well, let's say. Right, but the third one, we want the third one to be bigger. We want the third one to take up four proportions. Right? So it's in right, so it's relative to each other. So now we're saying the third one should be twice as big, right? Because four is twice as much as two. Right? So four proportions is twice as much as two proportions. So let's see what we get. All right. So now we see the the third box is indeed uh two times as big as box two and also two times as big as box one, because box one also has a proportion of two, which is half um, of the proportion that box three gets of the available space, right? So uh, we can also make this um, even bigger, right? So maybe it should be three times as big, right? Now it's three times as big as box two and also three times as big as box one, right? And we can play around with this box. Let's make box uh, one, let's give it four proportions. Right, so now um, this one is has two proportions, right? So it's going to be half the size of this one, which has four proportions. And it's going to be a third the size of this one, which has six proportions, right? So it's in relation to each other. You basically um, give them each a portion of the available space that they should take up. Now, one uh, practical, uh, very useful thing you can do here is, for example... If you do have a set width for box one and also for box two, right? So this one now has a hundred pixels again, and this one as well. Now we could give this a hundred pixels of width as well, just to get back to the default layout, right? But now let's say the third box should not be a hundred pixels wide. The third box should, should simply take up all the, all the rest of the available space. Right, so instead of hard coding 100 pixels, we can also just give this a flex and then actually just any number because it's the only one competing for that space. Right, so then it, it simply takes up all the other available space. This is actually very handy in practice as well. Okay, so this was really uh, theoretical with these boxes, uh, but I think it's necessary to understand the concept. Now it's important that we also see some practical real world examples. So I, I have collected the most common like real world scenarios. So make sure you watch the next section as well. All right, welcome to section two. In this section, we're gonna look at some practical examples of the most common real world layouts that you're gonna use Flexbox for. So to start off with, you know, I'm using some projects here from my uh, 
courses. This one is from the HTML and CSS course, which is available for free here on YouTube. Um, I also have some paid courses, so we're going to see a project from that as well. So the most common layout that you're going to see is really the, the header or the nav bar, where you have like one thing on one side and something else all the way on the other side. Right, so in code, that looks like this. Right, so you can ignore everything else. So this is the header, and in the header we have that logo. Here we're actually just using an icon. And the other part is the nav. Right? So then here, in the CSS, you can ignore anything else. Here, right, the header is the parent element. That's what we're going to make the flex container. Right, so let me actually remove all of the flexbox and styling here to see what it looks like if you use it, if you, if you create this without flexbox. Right, so here we have the logo, here we have the nav. This is the normal default layout, right? So now the first step is to get them on the same row, right? So you start, uh, you start then by, you do that with display flex, right? So now they sit on the same row. And now we want as much space between the nav and the logo, right? That's a horizontal layout challenge here. So for horizontal positioning, we have justify content in this case, right? So we have center, right? When we have space between in this case, because literally we want space between them, as much space between them as possible, right? So then you get this. This is a very common uh, layout uh, situation. You may have some variant of this where um, you have another element here in between them, right? Um, or you have something else that's close to the logo. But you'll see that most of those, um, you know, variants can also be solved in a similar manner. All right, so here we have another typical example. I hope you can see it, but this footer is a little bit de-emphasized, and that's a good, you know, design tip. You want to make things that are not the focus of attention or that should not be the focus of attention a little bit de-emphasized, but I hope you can see it. Um, especially if you're mobile, but we want the footer to sit at the bottom. A right? very common uh, problem where we, we want a sticky footer, basically. And right now it's just, you know, coming right after, well, the main part actually, right? And we can solve this very easily with Flexbox. So if we look at the HTML, it's structured like this, right? So we have the header, the main, and then the footer, right? So the footer right now is sitting right against the main here. So um, we want the footer to sit at the bottom, right? So what we can do is we can make the body element, which is actually the parent element, the flex container, right? The body is just like any other element. We can select it and we can make it a flex container. It, it works pretty much, there are some exceptions, but pretty much the same as any other HTML element. So what we can do is we can go to the body, we can select it by tag, and we can make that a flex container. Let's see what we get if we just say display flex. So display flex uh, means everything will sit on the same row. That's the default layout in Flexbox, right? So the header, the main part, and the footer now it looks very strange. They sit in the same row, right? So we don't want that. We still want that vertical flow. So we're going to say flex direction column. Right, so now we have that vertical flow again, and now you may say, well, nothing has changed. Well, that's not true. Now we have unlocked Flexbox, right? The Flexbox features. And one of the things we can do now is we can go to this footer and we can say margin on the top, auto. And that's gonna add as much margin between itself and the next element as possible. Right, so then this footer is sticking at the bottom because margin is taking up all that space in between itself and the other elements right so if you need a st sticky footer think about flexbox and um, this was also a project in my html and css course by the way so definitely check that out if you want some practice with this okay then i have a couple of examples in the social editor project for my premium css course if you really want to master css course i recommend that you check that one out but what we can learn from here, from this project, are a couple of things. So we have um, this, this gray area, and we want this canvas, this is a canvas, and the tools to be centered in there, horizontally and vertically, right? Very, very common, centering something. So in the HTML, it's structured like this. So this, this gray area is actually the artboard, 
And then the, ch the, ch the two child elements here are the canvas and the tools. So we can make the artboard. Uh, let's actually see what this looks like without Flexbox. Right, so if we do this, this is what it looks like without Flexbox. So, um, right, so the canvas is a block level element. So it's going to take up its own line. And then after that, we have the tools, which is a section. Also, a block level element takes up its own line. So you get that default layout in CSS like this. So now we're going to use Flexbox to center them. So we start off with display flex, right, on the parent element, which will make the canvas sit horizontally next to the tools, right? And I'm zoomed in quite a bit here, by the way. So you, you start to get you, you start to get these layout uh, quirks here that just ignore that. Right. So now they sit on the same line. Right. Now we want the canvas and the tools to be centered, let's say, horizontally. Right. So we say justify content, center. Okay, that's horizontal. And then vertically align items. Right? And now they are centered, right? Very common, uh, you want to center something, maybe you want to use Flexbox, you just use justify content and align items, set it to center. Okay, so next I want to look at these images because they also have a well, particular layout. We want them to be, you know, wrapping onto multiple lines, right? And uh, after this example, we'll look at another example that also has to do with these images. So these images, let's see, in the HTML, we have this parent element, and then in there we have these images, including the button here, right? So this is actually a button. So um, if, you, if you just use display flex, right? So we just make this a flex container. Remember, they don't wrap as a default, right? So in Flexbox, if you want them to wrap onto a new line, you have to make that explicit with flex wrap wrap right very common that you want to wrap something and here we also want some space between them both you know vertically and horizontal space right or row and column space so we can just use gap because we want equal space for both column and row so then you can see now that we have some nice space right so flexbox helps us out here in a couple of ways with both the wrapping and as well as the space between the elements uh, that's a much better uh, solution, by the way, with gap than if you had to use margin. Margin becomes really annoying to deal with when you make your project responsive, because you have to, right? If you use margin left here, for example, well, maybe in responsiveness, you have a one column layout, so you don't need margin on the left anymore. So now you need to start removing margin. It's just a major hassle. So with these gap properties, it's actually a very clean solution. Okay, now with responsiveness, let's say um, we want to make this available for tablets and mobile phones as well. So we're going to make it responsive, right? So we're going to make the, the viewport smaller and smaller and smaller. Now in the actual example here, we're actually just going to hide this panel. But you can imagine that if this panel gets opened up in mobile phone, you know, this should become much tighter here in this, this sec the images section here. Right, so we wouldn't have two images next to each other. Maybe we would have, you know, just one image on, you know, on the row. So you get a very long vertical uh, layout. And so this plus button is going to sit all the way at the bottom, right? So this plus button is for, for example, for if the user wants to add an image here. But maybe we don't want, you know, maybe we want to make it clearer to the user on mobile phones that they can upload a f an image. So we don't want it, we don't want it to be placed all the way at the bottom you know, on mobile phones. We want it to be at the at the beginning, at the, you know, it should be the first uh, element in here, right? So when we make it responsive, we want to make this uh, plus button the first element. So we want to change the order here, right? Very easy to do with Flexbox. So what we can do is we can give each image in the panel, we can give it an order of, let's say, 10, right? And then we can go to that button and we can simply give it a lower number for order, let's say five. Right, and then you can see the plus button comes here at, at the beginning, right? Not, not really important here for wider viewports because it's already clear where the button is. But on mobile phones where space becomes really tight, sometimes you need to switch up the order, right? Very easy to do with Flexbox. All right, so then let's take a look at these tools here. So we have three, you know, really editing tools, and then we can also have this removal tool. Right, but it makes sense that we want this removal tool to be a little bit separated from the other ones, right? So to prevent misclicks. So this removal tool shoots in all the way at the bottom, right? So let's actually see how we did this in Flexbox. 
Now here we have the tools section, right? This is gonna be the parent element. And then we have these child elements, which are the individual tools, right? So in the CSS, um, let's actually remove all the Flexbox uh, properties, declarations to see what it looks like in, in the default uh, situations, right? So if you just, if you just create the HTML for them, it's, they're going to sit like this because actually a button is an inline level element, right? So they're, they're going to sit on the same line, right? So we don't want that actually. We want them to, to flow vertically and then we want to make this all the way at the bottom, right? So there are basically two layout problems that we solve here with Flexbox. So the first thing we can do here is simply say display flex, right? On the parent element. And that actually won't change anything because they are already sitting horizontally, right? Remember the default layout in Flexbox is also that they sit horizontally like this. So here we actually want to say flex direction column, right? Now they flow vertically and we want there to be space between them as well, right? So we can say row gap, right? Just a little bit of, of space. And now we want the last one to sit all the way here at the bottom, right? So if you want to position one flex item individually, um, usually vertically you can use align self and then you would set it to end, right? But here we actually set flex direction to column. So I'll, the align properties switch with the justify content and margin auto, right? So what we can do here, instead of align self, we can simply use margin top, which will uh, in combination with the value auto, right, this is special behavior in Flexbox, which will push itself downwards all the way here. It's gonna, it's gonna add as much margin between itself and the other elements as possible. Okay, so last thing I wanna show you in this project is that the layout here, everything below the header, so we have this uh, sidebar here and then this panel, and then this part here, which, which is actually the main, this is actually also suitable for Flexbox because we want to have a certain uh, sizing of these three elements, right? So remember layouts are not only positioning, they are also the sizing of elements. So in the HTML, we have the app container here. This is the parent element. And then we have a sidebar, a panel, and the main. So we can make the app container. Let's see, app container. We can say display flex. Right, so then they're gonna sit next to each other, okay? But we want them to be sized in a, in a certain manner. So the sidebar, what we could do, um, what we could do is simply give the sidebar, well, what we actually did here in the project is actually use a width. But what we could do is we can give this a flex proportion of say one, right? And then the uh, panel, a flex proportion of, let's say, a uh, little bit more, four, right? And then we go to the main, and this maybe should get a proportion of 10, because this is much should be much wider, right? So we could do this, let's see what we get. Okay, so then we would get this, right? So the, the sidebar here is now way too wide, but you could use, you could use flex to uh, size these uh, elements, right? Now in practice, what we actually did, um, let's see, so the, the sidebar, we actually did not use flex here. You can still use a normal width, right? So we actually want this to, to stay 75 pixels. You know, we want, we want it to hard code its actual width, which is fine, right? So then this becomes actually 75 pixels wide. And then we wanted the panel also to have a certain set width, 350 pixels. So then the panel here is always this width, but then what we actually wanted was that the main, so this part takes up everything else, right? And you can do that by actually uh, giving this one um, some flex value, it can be any number, because that's the only one competing for the, for the available space. And in practice, what that means is it's going to take up all the other available space, right? So if I leave this off, right, so the main part would just go all the way, would only go to here, right? But we want it to take up all the available space. So just give it any number for flex, and that, that is exactly what it will do, right? So with flex, you can 
um, size elements in proportion to each other and sometimes it's also handy to have one element for example take up all the other available space all right so another project here this will be the last one this is actually also from my free html and css course so definitely check that out um, if you really want to take it to the advanced level and um, you know don't want to waste any time i recommend going through the premium course so here we have a couple of uh, layouts that are also suitable for flexbox so for example here in this first part we have these photos and then we have this uh, search uh, section so they should be they should be sitting next to each other as you can see but also they should they should uh, take up a certain uh, size so in the html it's it's called intro and in there we have the search section and the photos section so we can give the intro the display flex so they're going to sit next to each other and then um, since the photos will actually because they are photos and they have a certain size this is exactly the size they actually will take up so what we actually wanted here is that this search part simply takes up all the other available space so the only thing i did here is just give this uh, search section a flex uh, value if i leave this off you can see what it looks like without it yeah so then we get this right so here you can see this this black is actually the background of this section here you can see this is still some available space that is not being taken taken up by anything right but we want this search section to take up the available space right so even though it's on this side the browser will still give that space to this one to this section if we just give it any number it could also be seven because that's the only one competing for that available space right the photos do not have a flex proportion because um, they already take up enough space as they are and so we we give all the available space to this section okay so then below there we actually have the well credentials section so we have uh just some text and then these three uh images actually so in the HTML, it looks like this. So we have the credentials, then we have some text here, and then three images. So they are sitting horizontally in a certain position, right? It looks like a nice balanced position horizontally. And we can create that with Flexbox. So what I did here, right, we can make the... Let me actually remove this to see what it looks like without it. Yeah, so you have the paragraph which is going to sit on its own line because it's the block level element. And then you have these images. Images are inline level elements and they're going to sit on the same line. So we want all of this to sit on the same line, right? So if we just make the parent element a flex container, that is exactly what we will get. Okay, now we also want them to be, on. Oh, this is very common, we want them to be aligned vertically, right? So we want the text and the images also to be... Um, you know, in the center, right? So that they're nicely aligned. So that's a vertical issue. Right, so we can say align items, center, which will center all the flex items, right? So now they're sitting nicely, um, you know, vertically uh, aligned. But now we also want that, that nice balanced uh, horizontal position of them, right? So since we're talking about the horizontal position, we can use justify content and we have a couple of values for that we have space between uh, center and but here we also have space evenly and space around so here we used space around and you get that nice balanced uh, horizontal positioning of these elements all right very last uh, example i want to give you is in the how it works section so we have these uh, steps and they should be sitting on the same row Right, so just for that, by the way, you can also you, you can already use Flexbox. Right, it's very simple. Just I just want to I just want them to sit on the same row. Right, so in the HTML we have steps, and then we have the individual steps. So you can just right. So without Flexbox, this is what you would get. Right, because there this is right. These steps are section tags. That's a block level element by default. So they're gonna sit. They're gonna sit in their own line. They're gonna kick off anything else that's on the line. So you're gonna get this layout, right? but we want them to sit on the same row, right? So just for that, sometimes that's the only thing you need, right? So just say display flex. Right? Performance is not an issue, by the way. We have modern computers, modern browsers. It's all very efficient in CSS these days, so you don't have to worry about that, right? So sometimes that's all you need. Now here we also want a particular horizontal positioning, 
right? Just like in the credentials, right? So since we're working with horizontal positioning, here we, we can use justify content. Previously, we were using space around, but we also have space, e space evenly, which is very similar. But uh, with space evenly, you actually get the same amount of space here as in between here, right? So these were really common examples that you will uh, come across in the real world. And Flexbox is very powerful, so um, it's definitely worth it to you know spend a little bit more time on it and uh, really master it. And if this video was helpful, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. It helps immensely. And I hope to see you in another video. So have a nice day and bye.